Welcome to Bible Track Echoes. This program is the radio ministry of Bible Tracks Incorporated. Our mission is to take the Word of God to all the world. Our Bible teacher is the director of Bible Tracks, Pastor Mark Smith. Since 1938, Bible Tracks Incorporated has been publishing clear gospel tracks and supplying them to churches, missionaries, and individuals all over the world, and all at no charge. Information on how you can receive a free sample pack of our tracts will be given at the end of this broadcast. Now for our Bible study, here is our teacher, Pastor Mark Smith. Hello, my friend. Thank you for making the broadcast a part of your day. I have my Bible open today to a new portion of Scripture. If you've been listening along the way here, we've just completed a study in the book of Titus. But right now, my Bible is open to the Psalms, Psalm 97. Psalm 97, if you can, turn there, please. It's a coronation psalm. Psalm 97. While you're getting your Bible out, also get something on which you can jot some notes. Would you do that, please? I've got a gospel tract I want to urge you to get, uh, not only this particular tract, but a sample packet of gospel tracks. We are here in the week leading up to Easter. The track today is entitled Two Kinds of Death. Two Kinds of Death. A whole lot of talk will be going on these days concerning the death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ. Did you know there's two kinds of death? We'll be talking about that and that track here in just a moment. I want to get us ready for the broadcast today by asking you this. What thoughts and what questions come to your mind when you hear this set of words? Here it is. The Lord reigns. That's the phrase. The Lord reigns. Ponder those three words. The Lord, Jehovah, reigns. Now, that's a present tense statement. So does he, does God reign at this very moment? A friend, if he does not, who does then? Is there somebody else in charge of the universe then? In charge of our physical word? Is there some other God, small g, who has taken over the job title of God Almighty? Now, we all know that God created the world, and when he did, he put it into the caretaking hands of Adam. Adam was the ruler of the earth under God. God's ownership. But when he sinned, Adam gave rulership of the earth to Satan. Satan is only functioning now within the parameters allowed by God. So I come back. Does God reign? The answer is yes, he does. But one day, his reign from heaven's throne will become his reign from the throne on the physical place called Jerusalem. And that's the reign I want to talk about, turn our attention to. Here as we come to Psalm 97. Get your Bible and join us there. Get something on which you can jot some notes, won't you please? Now, my friend, listen, at the end of this broadcast, my announcer is going to come back on. He's already told you that Bible Tract Echoes is the radio arm of Bible Tracks Incorporated. That word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. It refers to a gospel tract, a short written presentation of God's plan of salvation. When we come to the end of the broadcast, as I said, my announcer will come back on and he will give you three ways by which you can give to us your name and mailing address. I want you to do that because I want to put into your hand a sample packet containing one each of all of our gospel tracks. One of them is this one I mentioned a moment ago. It's entitled, Two Kinds of Death. Two Kinds of Death. Let me read you part of it here. It says this. Suppose we have before us a casket in which lies the body of a dead man. He is physically dead, but friend, you are dead spiritually. He is separated from this world. You are separated from God. You say, I don't feel dead. Well, neither does that corpse. Your feelings have nothing to do with it. You don't have to feel dead to be dead. The corpse in the coffin is dead. You are dead in your sins. You are a sinner by nature. Some are Irish by nature. Some are Swedish, French, English by nature. But all men are sinners, children of wrath. It's a natural thing for you to sin. It's as natural for you to do that as for a fish to swim. You may say, I have no bad habits. Well, neither does that corpse. He doesn't lie, steal, swear, or gamble. There's nothing wrong with him except for one thing. He's dead. And that's serious. 
They bury people that are dead. Friend, you are dead in sin without Christ as Savior. You need a Savior. This gospel tract, Two Kinds of Death, will explain it to you. And right now, because we're leading up to Easter, people are thinking about Christ dying, being buried. He was dead. Praise God, he didn't stay dead. He arose from the dead. Get the sample packet of tracts from us, please. Won't you do that? Do that today as my announcer gives our contact information or just go to our website, which is BibleTracksInc.org. If your Bible's open to Psalm 97, look at verse 1. It says this, The Lord reigneth. Let the earth rejoice. Let the multitude of the isles be glad thereof. Clouds and darkness are round about him. Righteousness and judgment are the habitation of his throne. A fire goeth before him and burneth up his enemies round about. We're going to stop right there, at least for today. A dramatic statement, which I just read here, uh, these statements here from Psalm 97 are true, but are yet future in the uh, hour in which we presently live. You see, Psalm 97 is a coronation psalm. Actually, Psalms 95 through 100, they're all coronation psalms. They're all described the future rule and reign of Messiah on this physical planet Earth. Psalm 97 was originally designed to be sung at the rebuilding of the temple at Jerusalem. It was rebuilt when the Jews returned from their captivity in Babylon. In the midst of their celebration of this great house being rebuilt again, that now once again God could dwell in the Holy of Holies, in the midst of that, their hearts were deliberately turned to think of an even greater day, a greater day when Messiah would physically be present and rule the whole earth. Verse 5 talks about the emphasis of the whole earth rule. Oh, God would come and dwell in the temple in the Holy of Holies, but there we'd be in, in, not in physical form. But that day was coming when God would rule physically from Jerusalem. Let me turn right now today and remind us of the truth of the fact that Jesus Christ is going to come again, his second coming. Messiah will come to earth. I believe that Jesus will rapture the church age saints before the time period that you and I know of as the tribulation period. The church saints will escape the wrath which is to come, and the tribulation period will end with the second coming of Jesus Christ. Now, we are going to relate some key facts about his second coming today. I'm going to do this because this is important stuff in Psalm 97. It's premised upon the fact that Messiah will come and rule and reign physically on earth. First of all, the when question. When will Jesus come again? I said a moment ago, he will come at the end of the tribulation period. Listen to these verses out of Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verses 29 and 30 say this, Immediately after the tribulation of those days shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heavens shall be shaken, and then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven, and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn, and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. So when? He will come at the end of the tribulation. But wait a minute. What's the way in which he will come? In what manner will Jesus come at his second coming? Well, we've told these things about here in Matthew 24. We're told some basic facts. Fact number one is this. His return will be a bodily return, just like his resurrection was a bodily resurrection. Add to what we saw there in Matthew 24, this of what you, if you were to turn over to Revelation chapter 19, verses 15 and 16, there you will find that the clothes Jesus will wear at his second coming, that they are dipped in blood, even his clothes are described. Not only is his return going to be a bodily return, a second fact, his return will be a personal return. Again, Matthew 24 talks about the fact that Jesus, the Son of Man, will return. If I were to turn over to the very last verses of the Bible, Revelation 22, verse 20 says this, Surely I come quickly, Jesus says. 
A third fact about a second coming, his return will be done openly, not privately, not in secret, but done openly. Here's a great text for you. Revelation chapter 1, verse 7, it says this, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all the kindreds of the earth shall wail because of him. A fourth fact is this. His return will be done with great power, great power. Verses that have always just made me shudder are these out of 2 Thessalonians chapter 1, verses 7 and 8. They read like this, And to you who are troubled, rest with us. When the Lord Jesus shall be revealed from heaven with his mighty angels in flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God and that, that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, okay. Then we've talked about the when. We've talked about the way Jesus is coming to rule and reign. But we come now to the question of why. Why was Jesus going to come again? Now, perhaps you think that's a silly question to ask, but it must be answered. Jesus will return to complete his work as Messiah. He will complete what God the Father has commissioned God the Son to do. Well, listen again to the word of God. These verses coming out of Revelation 11, this is parts of verses 17 and 18, which read this way, because thou hast taken to thee the, thy great power and hast reigned and the nations were angry and thy wrath is come in the time of the dead that they should be judged and that thou shouldest give a reward unto the servants, thy servants, the prophets and to the saints and to them that fear thy name small and great, and shouldest destroy them that destroyeth the earth. And that's where the verses end there. Jesus, friend, is going to come to deal with those who oppose him. He's going to come to deliver his people from their enemies, and he will come to establish his millennial or his 1,000-year kingdom on planet earth. He personally, physically present on this planet physical planet. A moment ago, I read verses there out of 2 Thessalonians and part of verse 8. That's where we're told that Jesus will take vengeance on those who do not obey the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tell me, my friend, have you obeyed the gospel? How do you obey the gospel? It's very simple. You, understanding you're a sinner on your way to hell, you you receive Jesus Christ with a broken, repentant, and trusting heart. You receive him as your only hope to be saved from sin. Jesus will come. He will come to deal harshly in wrath with those that are the enemies of the gospel. He will come to reward those that have received the gospel. You're in one of two camps. I began by that talking about that track. There's two kinds of death. You are either in Christ or outside of Christ. When Christ comes, you either have obeyed the gospel or not obeyed. What have you done with the good news of the gospel that saves sinners from sin, death, and hell? Have you received Christ? If you haven't, do so now. Thank you for joining us today for Bible Tract Echoes. If you would like to receive a free sample packet of our tracts, you can contact us by calling 309-828-6888. Our mailing address is Bible Tracks, P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. Again, our phone number is 309-828-6888. And our mailing address is P.O. Box 188, Bloomington, Illinois, 61702. You can also contact us through our website. Our web address is BibleTracksInc.org. Remember, the word tracks is spelled T-R-A-C-T-S. That address is BibleTracksInc.org. May the Lord richly bless you as you serve Him.